Hello, how are you doing? Welcome back to some more F122 and another part of our My Team Career Mode with uh, Braun GP. Today we are closing in on the end of the season. Uh, we are taking part in the Japanese Grand Prix. Five races to go this year. Of course, we've got a sprint race in there as well. Uh, apologies for not having a, an F1 video yesterday. First time we've missed uh, the F1 video uh since the game came out um but you know it, it's not going to be daily forever um we will try and keep it as as frequent as we can but uh yeah enjoyed the last couple of episodes uh obviously the the challenge level has has definitely increased and uh you know definitely struggling a little bit more um uh, with the car as we're going round to round now so uh just need to make sure that we're we're still performing at our best. We're going to uh, pop in the, the freshest engine of the lot um, and try and take that forward for the next couple of Grand Prix just to make sure that we've got the best possible chance. Um, obviously, it's not exactly a power circuit, Japan, but uh, one... Well, you know, there are a couple of longish straights, so, you know, we want to be at the, the best possible power levels for our car. Uh, we have got a couple of R&D uh, or research and development projects in the pipeline. Um, we're not going to get any before the next Grand Prix. I don't uh, might get the, the updated wing mirrors, so it could help a little bit, actually. Uh, can't have any more upgrades there. Chassis upgrade. Uh, the next one we can get in play. So we can either go for a cable assembly or some heavy dampers. Uh, we'll go for the cable assembly. That will be in place before the USA. We should be able to get that one in there as well. Um, and unfortunately, I don't think we can do any more. That's okay. Should be able to after this weekend. But uh, that's perfect. We've got 4.8 million in the bank. Uh, apparently we don't have enough to pay for Nico Hulkenberg. Uh, who's now gone up to £5 million. So uh, we'll keep him. Keep him about. Obviously uh, Jensen Button at £5 million will also be at the, the same sort of... Um, same sort of rating but uh very very similar drivers in, in terms of all of that but uh, i think we'll keep nico for now he's doing a, a sterling job um but oh there you go fernando alonso is going to be retiring at the end of the season so that is a a massive one um where is he on on this list is he in there uh ocon he's not no fernando alonso on that list so, yeah, he will be retiring at the end of the year. So that's going to open up a seat at Alpine. And uh, I'll be interested to see who takes over that uh, position. But let's have a little look. So we've got the sponsor event, perhaps. I think some simulator training. Let's uh, push forward and get into the oh, Japanese Grand Prix. Without there you go. There's another the car, upgrade. The next race weekend. And that moves us above Haas. Unbelievable. So we are really getting into... The midfield uh, teams now which is awesome so let's keep going and on to the japanese grand prix well we've just had the the dreaded message about regulation changes so we'll have a little look uh, at that uh, oh we've had a power unit upgrade as well that's good so let's just uh push forward on that uh yeah so it's going to be the chassis department and the durability department that are struggling um, we of course want to try and keep as many of these intact as possible um, and we should be able to by the end of the year we might as well adapt that part straight away but yeah uh, maybe not upgrade any more chassis parts this year focus on the aero and the powertrain if we're doing new upgrades but uh yeah very very interesting and hopefully we'll be 
we'll be in the in the right place at the right time at the end of the season to have everything sorted. Okay, so we survived through Spoon Curve, and now we're going to be absolutely going at it, hammer and tongs in this final sector through 130R, where we're always very, very quick, and now breaking down into the final chicane. Nice on the brakes, and here we come, up to the line. What's it going to be? It's a 131 flat. Which puts us ahead of Max Verstappen for now, to be honest with you. Behind the likes of Mick Schumacher and Bottas just absolutely parking it on the... Uh, oh, it was Guan, uh, Joe Guan Yu, actually. Uh, absolutely parking it. But we're okay. Let's have a little look. So, 10th place at the moment. Uh, but still, a long way to go in this session. Well, here we come up to the line, four tenths quicker. Oh, and that is just enough to get through to Q2 in P16. Goodness me, that was close. But, uh, yeah, a lot of work to do if we are to get through to Q3. And Nico Hulkenberg actually quickest in Q1 on a 129 4 there. Carlos Sainz has a five-place penalty, apparently. Um, and going out in Q1, Lewis Hamilton, who uh, didn't post a time. So we are very, very fortunate that we got through. Uh, what actually happened to Lewis Hamilton? Did he... Uh... Oh, for corner cutting, he had his uh, lap invalidated. So there you go. Uh, that is that. So uh, let's get ourselves into Q2 and see how we get on. Well, there we go. A 131.4 is our first lap time in Q2. That's going to be absolutely nowhere near good enough. At the moment, only good enough for 16th place. Trying to dial our eye in for where the improvements can be made. Sector one, so there you go. You can see already. Okay, we've only got one lap of fuel remaining. Half a second. Yeah, a little bit too wide there. Yeah, we know that there's some time to be made there. One more lap, and that's all we're gonna get. Well, one and a half seconds quicker on this second lap. Oh, and it is enough. P9. We get through to Q3. Wow, that was an awesome lap there. I really wasn't expecting to get through. But we managed to absolutely perfect the lap. Uh, and just about get ahead of Nico Hulkenberg, who was slower than his Q1 time. Uh, but once again, Carlos Sainz, he was out in Q2. Perez out in Q2. So, quite a mixed up grid here. Okay, here we come up to the line. First lap in Q3 and to 131.5, which is on all tyres. Certainly can do a lot better than that, need to do a lot better than that if we want to get anywhere above 10th. Uh, looks like most people have ran on the old tyres. I think, in theory, we could p perhaps get into the 129.6s by the end of the day, but uh, I just don't see it happening, if I'm honest with you. Lap time of the day, and it's P8, which, you know, I think at the start of the day, we would have definitely took. Uh, we improved throughout the sessions, I think that was our best lap of the lot. I think there was still a couple of tents on the table, but uh, a 130.0. And Fernando Alonso. 
goodbye for now then. But we are really just getting started. Make sure you join us again for Lights Out tomorrow. But what a weird uh, lineup. You've got George Russell taking pole position, Charles Leclerc there second, Fernando Alonso in third, Ricardo fourth, Bottas fifth, Magnussen in sixth there, Verstappen seventh, we start eighth. And uh, Nico Hulkenberg will be disappointed starting in 10th position. If he'd put in his Q1 time in Q3, he would have started P4 in tomorrow's race. But let's uh, see if we can go and grab ourselves a double points finish. Welcome along then to the magnificent Suzuka International Circuit, a stone's throw away from Issei Bay in the beautiful Japanese countryside. What surprises lie in wait for us today in the Japanese Grand Prix? 18 corners make up a lap of the incredible figure of eight Suzuka circuit with 10 to the right and eight to the left for a distance of 3.6 miles. Average lap speeds around here are fairly quick and if it stays dry, expect it somewhere in the region of 136 miles per hour. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks like for today's race. Charles Leclerc lines up on pole position and Valtteri Bottas will line up alongside. As we continue through the rest of the grid today, we have Magnussen, the captain, Esteban Ocon and Hulkenberg. Russell, they've taken a grid penalty. Perez, Verstappen and Pierre Gasly. Fernando Alonso, they'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty. Vettel, Daniel Ricciardo and Mick Schumacher. Latifi, Sonoda, Sir Lewis Hamilton, and Alex Albon. They've taken a grid penalty. Joe, Norris, Stroll, and Carlos Sainz will start from the back of the grid. Which of these talented drivers will come out on top today? With me today, of course, is Anthony Davidson. Why don't we discuss Red Bull? What do you make of their performance so far this season? Well, the atmosphere within that team seems very positive at the moment. Everyone seems like they're in great spirits and having a lot of fun doing what they do. And that's definitely contributed to the performances we've seen. Well, there you go. A ridiculous amount of grid penalties have uh, given us uh, a real interest in uh grid and uh yeah i have forgotten to move it back to 50 percent. so i do apologize about that but uh we are ready and raring to go uh soft tires and then medium tires uh straight away here i mean we could potentially go um mediums and then soft i wonder how that would play into our hands um you know what, I might go for that, just for something a little bit different. We'll go mediums and then uh, softs towards the end to try and uh, gain back any positions that we lose. Just, I, I don't think we have the pace to uh, push otherwise, so let's get into the race. Do something different, but we are up in P4, which is a the ridiculously good starting position. Uh, and it looks like Kevin Magnussen is going sure for the same strategy. But, um, yeah, I mean, this is going to be a very, very tough Grand Prix for us the to stay where we are. We'll try. We'll give it a, we'll give it a good go. Can. And they'll be hoping to finish today's race on the podium, failing that within the points. And, uh, of course, we could potentially come in a, a lap early if we need to, try and get that undercut on those soft tyres. But uh, hoping to get into some clear air form well it is going to be an intense start to the race and a very very mixed up order Charles Leclerc could win the championship today he's 103 points ahead of his teammate Carlos Sainz so depending on how many points he can get today ahead of him who knows but uh, here we go lights out away we go here in Japan, it's an excellent start off the grid actually, considering we're on medium tyres. But Ocon off to a better start, and Hulkenberg flies round our inside into turn one. We knew it was Hulkenberg, so we sort of let him go. Only down to sixth at the start of this Grand Prix. Don't want to catch too much of the curb, we know it can unsettle the car if we do that. So 
it's all going to be about staying nice and close but Charles Leclerc gets an excellent start he's often running in this Grand Prix so go into Degna 1 and Degna 2 Sergio Perez hounding the, the back of this car. Trying to stay just behind Nico Hulkenberg here. And if we can stay in his DRS, give us a great chance later on in the Grand Prix. A bit wide there. I was worried we were going to get a track extension warning there, but just lifted off the throttle in time but you can see how much time we're making up as we head towards 130R and this could be a very good chance if we can get a good exit onto the pit straight so here we go make sure you stay on the tarmac section and we end lap one in sixth position we'll certainly take that Well, look at this we've got ERS through 130R that is huge and we're going to go down the inside of the final chicane and that is us through into fifth position now and now we got Kevin Magnussen having a little look at Bottas it is looking like medium tyres may well be the best solution Looks like the softs are overheating at this phase of the Grand Prix. Well, there you go, Magnussen having a look at Bottas into the first corner. It looked like there was going to be contact there, but no such thing. And Bottas stays ahead. Well, there goes Bottas into the pit lane we've dropped out of the DRS zone here okay, Nico's into the pits Nico in the pits into the pits as well now well now we're closing in on Esteban Ocon on lap 5 of this Grand Prix using the ERS and I think Ocon will be coming into the pits this lap and there he goes try and get that final little bit of VRS deployment and now it's all about K-Mag in front here we go then into the pit lane and we're in we're into the pit lane and I hope we didn't uh, make contact with the wall late. That is what I'm hoping. Anyway, we come in. Oh no, the wheel stuck. That's going to be huge because there goes Ocon. And I think Hulkenberg's going to come out ahead of us as well. Okay, stay clear of the and Perez. So, we'll, well, very frustrating about the pit stop. We would have been so much closer to Perez and Hulkenberg had we had a, a smooth pit stop, but that mistake has definitely cost us, you know, potentially fighting for the podium today. Magnussen's uh, just come out in front of Hulkenberg and Perez now. Both quicker than Magnussen. It'll be interesting to see if it causes any battling between them. And there is yellow flags, so Green flag. something's happened somewhere. I'm sure Guan Yu that's out of the session. Don't know. Well, now there's only two laps left, so there's going to be no safety car there, but could have potentially meant that. 
Well, here we go then. We're on to the final lap of this Grand Prix. And there you go. Magnussen's on the hard tyre. So he's going to be struggling here. In these final couple of laps. I don't really know why he's gone hard tyres. Unless he had no new soft tyres. It's a very strange AI decision. But I think we just need to keep it tidy try and hold off Max but we go very wide there and Max gets through nothing we could do about that well, might be able to get him back after Spoon but he's already miles away from us but, uh, should be far enough ahead of Seb Vettel but that was a uh, a bad moment there but it does look like we're going to come out of this race with some points and more importantly it looks like Nico Hulkenberg is going to get his first point since returning to the sport and his first real chance to do so without any sort of issues in the race and Vettel tried there but failed and Charles Leclerc wins the Grand Prix I think he's going to win the championship I don't know where Sainz is I don't think he's actually scoring any points so Charles Leclerc is world champion I think we come up to the line we finish eighth place and there we go that's a wrap And with that, another year of Formula One. And there he to a is. Close, and He's a done new it. World Drivers' Champion is declared. Another entry added to that prestigious list of the sport's most incredible drivers. That's a spectacular victory, then. And with it, the championship is secure. It's been a magnificent season, and they thoroughly deserve the cheers of the crowd here today. Tell me, Ant, how do you think they were able to deliver such an incredible result today? I think a large part of the result comes down to temperament. They were able to keep their heads when everyone around them was losing theirs. And that's allowed them to get the best out of the car, to maximise the strategy and to stay out of trouble. Ferrari are at it again. An excellent performance at today's Grand Prix. And they're certainly a team that know what they're doing out there. Excellent performances from Ocon and Bottas once again on the podium. Absolutely brilliant from them two this season and, and no real chance of us finishing seventh now, you'd suggest, but uh, After an incredible there you go. Racing, who is your driver of the day, Ant? Well, it's got to be Nico Hülkenberg. He displayed exceptional skill out on track today and wasn't afraid to fight his way through the pack. The Constructors' Championship may be a foregone conclusion at the moment, but regardless, let's look at the standings. So then, Ferrari have now moved out of sight and out of reach. It's another triumph for the Italian team as they claim the World Constructors' Championship. Meanwhile, good work from Aston Martin this weekend, who pushed themselves further up the order. Well, that certainly was an exciting weekend of Formula One. Be sure to join us for more exciting Formula One action very soon. Well, there we go then. The first double points finish of the season, and I will certainly take that. I can't wait for the next episode. Hopefully, you guys can't either. Uh, leave a like if you've enjoyed this one, and subscribe for plenty more F1 content. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.